So you are failing as a photographer. Your pictures are not coming out as good as you want them to. You feel like you're running out of ideas and that you can't be creative. You're not getting the work that you think that you deserve. And you know, you feel like you're failing as a photographer. Well, I've been teaching photography since 2002 and I've literally had thousands, tens of thousands of failing photographers come to me and I can tell you now that the reasons that they fail are very common. It's a common thread throughout. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you the three things that cause photographers to fail. And what you've gotta do is be humble and admit if any of these three things is you. The first one is you've always got an excuse. All right, you've always got an excuse. That excuse could be, I haven't got the right lens. I haven't got the right camera. I haven't got the time. I mean, that is a massive one, right? I haven't got the time. All of these are just excuses. And if you was genuinely serious and you genuinely wanted to make your photography better than whatever else is out there, you will find the time. You will make the time you will use your limitations in the equipment that you've got to be more creative. I'll give you a little example. I took a phone call the other day um, from someone who wanted to join the School of Photography and he was talking about how he don't think that he could do the wildlife photography course because his camera only did eight frames per second, right? So it's like, my camera only does eight frames per second, so I'm not gonna get any good wildlife pictures. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not true. If you cannot take decent wildlife pictures with eight frames per second, you're not gonna take decent wildlife pictures, you know, full stop. Don't forget that back in the 90s or even before that, it was like one frame per second and then it went to two or three frames per second, etc. And people back then were taking really good wildlife shots. So, you know, it's just an excuse. The excuse comes from watching a dodgy YouTube video and thinking, oh, I'm never going to do that because I've not got me 20 frames per second. But the point I'm making is that them excuses you're giving yourself, so you've created a barrier for you. Why, right? If someone else creates that barrier for you, fair enough, right? But you're creating your own barrier via excuses. So that is one of the reasons that makes you foul as a photographer. Another reason, a big, big reason that I see a lot is effort. And I don't think people realize how much effort you have to put in to getting a good photograph. Of course, you've got all of the effort needed to learn about photography, about post-processing, etc. So if you are not prepared to sit down and learn, then of course, you're not going to learn. It's not rocket science, is it? But there's people out there that are not prepared. They think they are, but they're not. You know, they've got a full-time job and they think, oh, you know, I can't, but I've got to go to uh, Granny's at the weekend for a roast dinner or something like that. Whereas you could have spent that Sunday learning photography and putting that effort in. And the other effort is actually taking the picture. So you've got the effort in learning, you've got the effort of taking a picture, you know, them epic landscape scenes, for instance, you know, top of a mountain, sunset, and that kind of stuff. That don't just come like that. You've got to plan it. You know, you've got to go at a certain time of the year, certain time of the day. You might need to get up at like four in the morning and drive for two hours to get to a place. And all of that is effort. And that is how you get them good pictures. So that's at number two. I think that effort and the, the way that people have that lack of effort, shall we say, that makes you fail as a photographer. And the third reason is that you don't realize that you're still a beginner. Now that is a harsh thing to hear, isn't it? Especially if you've been watching YouTube videos for five years and you've been taking pictures for five years and talking to John in the camera club and you know everything. Well, I can tell you now that a common theme of feedback that we get from our members is that they didn't realize how much they didn't know. Watching YouTube videos, speaking to Johnny down in the camera club, 
is not learning photography. And when you haven't got solid foundations in your knowledge, and this is just in anything, you're not gonna be good at that subject. I'm gonna read you a few reviews. These are genuine reviews from genuine members and we have got loads of them. I, I think we must be over a thousand reviews on you know, Google and Facebook, etc. These are public, you can go and look at them yourself. Right? I'm just gonna literally read them to you. I printed them off here. Just finished the beginner's course and I bet like many, I thought that I could skip that one. No, I took Mark's advice and I did it. And I figured out that I know nothing. All right, that's from Leslie Warrington in the UK. Um, we've got another one here. I learned more in the last few months than over 20 years. That's from Nathan Doyle, again from the UK. I feel like I've learned more with this class than I have from anything or any other course since I picked up a DSLR camera about two years ago. That is from Lisa Mitchell in the US of A. Now you can check these reviews out. I'm not just making this stuff up. After about three lessons, I felt that I had no idea what I was doing before I, before taking the course. KD uh, Evich here, that's from the USA as well. I'll just end on this again, I've got loads here, go and check them out, but this is a good one. I only wish I started these earlier with TSOP instead of muddling my way through YouTube videos for the last four years. Ivan Stevens from the UK. I've got loads here from Canada, Iceland, uh, Denmark, loads of things, right? Just go and check them out. But the point I'm making here is that you don't know what you don't know, okay? And if you're just surrounding yourself with other people that don't know what they don't know, you can see it's a recipe for disaster. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're just trying to advertise the school of photography. You're just showing off all of your comments, etc. I'm not, I'm just telling you that it's an absolute fact, okay? Majority of our members, actually, if you're a member and you are watching this video, put it in the comments underneath so other people can see, right? The majority of our members say exactly the same thing. I'm glad I joined because I've, it's filled in a lot of gaps in my knowledge that I didn't have. And therefore, obviously, it makes them better photographers. So that's the three common things. And I'm telling you now, they're very common. And you have got to be honest with yourself now and ask, is this me, right? If it is, you need to correct it, okay? I've seen it thousands, actually tens of thousands of times. You know, I've been teaching photography since 2002, right? So I've seen it tens of thousands of times. Them three things that I've just told you there are extremely common for the failing photographer. So I hope that this has helped you, you know, that this has kicked you back into life, made you realize your failings. And once you realize your failing, this is really important, right? Because to be humble is, is to be strong as a matter of fact. You know, the strongest men out there are the humblest ones. The weakest ones are the ones that cannot admit to mistakes. And I've always said that and I maintain it, right? So you have got to be humble and admit to yourselves where your failings are. Once you realize where them failings are, you can put them right and you can go forwards and you'll be much more happier. And of course, you can learn with us over at the School of Photography. This wasn't a whole advert, please believe me, it wasn't a whole advert, but we do have all of these courses to help you learn if that's one of the things that was uh, causing you to fail. So please comment on this video. Is there another reason that you think uh, uh, causes photographers to fail? If you think, uh, put that in the comments. Are there tips that you can give to other people to help them pick up and, you know, succeed? Put them in the comments as well and help people out. Like the video, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of this content. We literally cannot bring it to you unless you click that like button and subscribe to our channel. We can't do it, so please do that for us. And remember, if you want to learn photography properly, come over and see us at theschoolofphotography.com.